See, we still see the yellow where it wasn't exposed, and we see this grayish color where it was most exposed. Can I pick up the uh, this yeah, here? Yeah, please. Okay. So, let's see if I line this up right. So, see the little the black border right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so no light gets through there. That's black. And right here, it's still yellow. That means it never got touched by ultraviolet light. Now, these parts here where you get these different variations around the tree and whatnot, that's the part where some light got through. And then this really gray part here, that's where like all the light got through because nothing was blocking it. Exactly. But are we done with the process yet? No, we still have to develop it. The one chemical we need is water. Water. Wow. So we're going to oxidize all the salts in this. Okay. Thank you for showing us all oh, this. Oh, no problem. I'd shake your hand, but you got gloves on. Yeah, and you don't <laughs> want to get chemicals on you. Right. There's a really cool everyday phenomena you can see with ultraviolet light. This is a UV lamp. It gives off UV light, like a black light. And some molecules absorb that and spit out lower energy light, like visible light. And that's called fluorescence. Fluorescence is a phenomena where something absorbs high energy light and spits out lower energy light. Lots of things do it. I've got a fluorescent molecule here in this beaker. It's called fluorescein, and it's the same stuff they use in the Chicago River to dye the river green at St. Patrick's Day. Let's look at it under the black light. See how it gives off that cool green-yellow glow when I put the light over it? So it's absorbing ultraviolet light, and it's giving back lower energy visible light. The same thing can happen with extra virgin olive oil and a green laser. When I shine this green light through, you can see red laser going through. So the green light is very high energy, and the red light is relatively low energy. And again, we see fluorescence. It's extra virgin olive oil and a green laser. Now the next time you see that cool, eerie glow in something, it's probably fluorescence. Now we're at the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And the reason we call it visible is because that's the part our eyes can actually see. It's a very special part, and it's very narrow. It's only from about 400 to 800 nanometers. But that's enough to make up all the colors of the rainbow that our eyes can see. The red portion of the spectrum has a wavelength of about 650 nanometers. The violet portion has a wavelength of roughly 400 nanometers. It's easy to remember the colors of the visible spectrum. You just have to remember one name, Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. The red portion has a very long wavelength and low energy. And that's odd because we usually use red to show things that are hot. And the blue portion has a very short wavelength and a very high energy, which is, again, odd because we use it to associate with things that are cool. But in short, they make colors, everything that we can see. Every work of art, the blue sky, stars overhead, everything. And I even wrote a poem. <clears throat> Roses are 650. Violets are 475. Learning about the spectrum makes me happy to be alive. Well, I, I liked it. OK, well, let's go out and see what we can see. So what are we waiting for? That. Ooh, I love fireworks. Yeah, me too. I bet you like it for some scientific reason. Oh, you think? Yeah, for me, fireworks are a good way to see what's going on with atoms in the visible spectrum. What's that? Well, you know, visible energy, that's about as much energy as it takes to move electrons around in atoms. Really? Yeah, you see, when fireworks go off like that, uh -huh. the atoms in them are getting a lot of energy, and so the electrons get really excited and move really far away from the nucleus. And then when they come back down, they give that energy back, and it just so happens to be visible. So. When I'm watching a fireworks show, I'm really seeing atoms with excited electrons? Pretty much. Does that mean that different colors come from different elements or atoms? Let's check my periodic table. But yeah. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Red, that can come from lithium or strontium. Orange, that can come from calcium. Yellow, that's from sodium. Green, that can come from barium. Purple, it's a combination of strontium and copper. And then white, well, that can be from uh, titanium, magnesium, or aluminum. Do you always carry your periodic table with you in fireworks shows? Yes, I do. Is that your wife? Behind the table? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Now we're leaving the range of what we can see, and we're going to longer wavelengths, the infrared, or IR. This type of radiation has a wavelength of about 750 nanometers all the way out to 100 microns. 
and it's usually associated with heat. When things feel warm to the touch, they're giving off energy that fits into the IR portion of the spectrum. When something is giving off so much energy that it actually glows, then it's really hot. As a matter of fact, IR was first discovered when people were using prisms to break up white light. They noticed that the region just beyond the red portion caused items to get warm. The IR is a pretty cool place to see the world, so let's go to the zoo and see what the animals look like in the IR. Oh, good! I love Lincoln Park Zoo! Yeah? Well, wait do you see yeah. what like in the IR. Okay! You're gonna love it. Hi. Hi. I'm Mike. I'm Steve. Nice to meet you. And this is Christine. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Steve, what do you do here at the zoo? I'm the senior vice president for conservation programs. So I'm responsible for all the animals and all our scientists, all our conservation programs and our education programs. That sounds like a huge job. Uh, it is. <laughs> wow. I was wondering if you might be able to help us a little bit. We brought a infrared camera here with us. One of the things we're trying to learn about is how things look a little differently in the infrared than we do in the visible. And I know that sometimes different animals can take on different temperatures based on any number of things. So we thought we'd just look and see how things look visually compared to uh, the infrared. Okay, great. Right, so um, w can we take a look at a, a snake or something? Sure, let's go. All right, thanks. Okay, so we have the little device, and I just point towards the snake. Sure, this what? is a ball python. A ball python, okay. And to be honest, let me put this in here, so let's see here. I'm not really seeing any. You're any probably going to find that he's about the same temperature as everything else, because he's same about the temperature as environment. It's mm -hmm. pretty warm in here, right? So that doesn't mean that he's cold and he's not doing anything. So now we're seeing an armadillo. Yes, this is a three-banded armadillo from Brazil, uh, okay. one of the smaller armadillos. <gasps> um, you can see it's got three bands here in the middle, hence its name. Right. Uh, our armadillo here in the U.S. actually has nine of these bands. It's a nine-banded armadillo. Okay. Um, you ought to look pretty hot. He looks very there. hot. Yes. Okay, underneath now. That's on his abdomen. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can turn him over. Is his uh, carapace a little cooler? It is a little bit cooler, but it looks like there are some hot, like there's yeah, um, there are probably little stripe, hot spots right, right, right along here. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Armadillos actually aren't as good at maintaining their temperature as a lot of other animals. It's actually pretty variable. They let mm -hmm. it move around uh, several degrees um, in and centigrade. They're, and they're pretty happy that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most again, most animals, mammals, birds, reptiles, mm -hmm. um, let their body temperature move around a little bit if they can. Um, and they regulate, um, the amount of heat they're radiating by, uh, oh, changing their blood flow, trying to find a nice cool place using yeah. convective heat loss. So a lot of different reasons. Okay. Okay. This, this is really very cool. All right. Check it out. See the gorilla? One moving yeah. right there. This is what it looks like in the IR. Okay, see this, see this guy here? Yeah, he looks hungry. <laughs> He's pacing back and forth looking for something to do. Yeah. Notice, notice the reddest parts of him, where are those? Yes, I see his ears and his nose. They're redder than the, his whole body. Yeah, losing a lot of heat through there. Look at the tail. Oh, okay. Look at his tail. His tail is really cool. Yes, yeah, compared to the rest of him, the tail is quite cool. Yeah. There's an ostrich right there. Now look at, see how hot the ground is? Yes. And see how hot the ostrich is? Yeah. Makes it really hard to tell them apart, like in the Almost IR. Blends in. <laughs> I would never know there's an ostrich there. Hmm. There's another one here, closer to the surface of the water. Nothing. I can hardly I tell he's there. Blue there. Just a little, like an okay. underside of the plumage. Pretty cool in the IR. Yeah. Keeps getting cooler. All right, so I think there's one more animal we ought to check out, and that'd be you and me. Okay, we've got you in the IR right now. Very cool. Now, do me a favor. You take off your glasses, and there you go, wave, yeah? take off your glasses. Yeah. Now we can see your eyes, smile, yeah, big smile. So what do I look like in the IR? Oh, you're hot around the head, that's for sure, you're very hot yeah. on the top of your head. <laughs> okay, go ahead and uh, put your glasses back on. Sure. Totally can't see your eyes. Can't see my eyes at it all? It looks then? like you're wearing sunglasses. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's because IR does not really travel through glass very well, and so what your glasses are made of, IR is uh -huh. not going to want to go through. No, Mike, we're going to see you through the IR. How do I look? He looked pretty red, actually. A yeah? little orange. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Look something really cool like ice cream. Uh-huh. What color is it? Oh, wow, it turned black. Actually, now it's a little blue and now black. Okay. That tells me that, that is this cool. is going to be much cooler than in my mouth. Wow, the IR is pretty cool. IR is pretty hot. That's what this is telling you. This. This is cool. This is pretty hot. 